everybody. This is Edna, a cybersecurity engineer. We are here today to learn about a new product called Deceive, made by David Bianco at Splunk. Uh, this is a part of a blog that I'm doing for the Thor Collective Dispatch. So join me as we dive in to um, Deceive, a honey, an AI-generated honeypot. So let's see what it's all about. All right, so if you come here to the Splunk website, you can see that there is a post that was written called Introducing Deceive, a Proof of Concept Honeypot Powered by AI. Uh, this was put out earlier this month, and this is what we're going to be going over today. Um, you can see it's created by David Bianco, and this is about creating AI-generated high-fidelity honeypots. So your video game developer system include realistic video game source and asset files. Uh, so this is going to be setting up that honeypot with that information. Uh, we'll go look at session summary powered by AI. Uh, so when you get the log file, it will include at the end of your SSH session, a summary created by the AI evaluating um, what were the commands are they suspicious? What's the intent? And were they benign, suspicious, or malicious? So we look at that. It's you know in the JSON log files. Um, there's some more information about it. it talks about like the, this is through SSH. Um, and then we want to point out that this is a proof of concept. And it's not a production grade solution yet. Maybe in the future it will be. Uh, we're hopeful. Uh, but do you know, use it in your home lab environment. And then here's the how to get started. So let's do that. Let's get started. Here's the GitHub page for the project. And you can see that there is this code button here. We're going to copy that code in the HTTPS or that link. And we're going to open up a terminal and we're going to do get, you know, first we'll get to, um, let's put this in the desktop. And then we'll do a git clone. And then we'll paste that link right there. And then we'll press enter. And then it will make a copy of that project in our directory there on the desktop. So now you see there is the deceive program. We'll change directories to get into that program. Uh, now you can see here are the assets in that program. And now what do we need to set up? Well, it had the git clones. We already did that. Uh, next thing is installing the dependencies. Now this is going to be uh, a lot of information in this um, requirements.txt. So make sure that when you set this up in a virtual machine, that you have enough room in your virtual machine for all of this. And I see that I need to install pip3. Let me do that. All right, so now we're going to do pip3 install our requirements. Everything is downloading. Uh, this may take a minute because it is installing a lot of things. So we just watch that go by. Um, it takes a minute. So we're actually going to go ahead and skip ahead for right now. Uh, you can watch. Boop. That was magic. Video editing magic you saw right there. It finished many minutes of installing later. So now, uh, now that we have that installed, we are going to generate the SSH host key. So we're going to copy this command right here. And we're going to plop that right here into the terminal. This is going to generate the host key. And you see it's being saved in that SSH folder. Um, and yeah, I'm skipping doing a password for it, passphrase for it. But if you want to, you can. You'll just have to remember it when you're logging in. Um, all right, so next we need to copy that ssh config ini template file. 
So I'm just going to do a copy command CP. I'm going to paste that file name and that's going to be the from and then the next is going to be two. So let's take off that template at the end. Press enter. And now it's made the copy of that in the SSH folder. Uh, let's go ahead and check that out. So let's open up the file. Uh, Got to get to the folder. So go to the C folder in SSH. There's that config.ini. Um, you can see that there's like there's the log file, uh, the port SSH. Uh, here's the open AI information. If you want to change it to a different large language model, um, you would just put that in there and put whatever you're using. But we're using open AI for this example. Um, all right, so let's close that out. What's our next step? Uh, we have the config. We just showed you the LLM. Uh, you can also add user accounts in the user account section with username and passwords if you would like your honeypot to support that. Um, now we're going to go into the prompts. So let's see, that is in the prompt.txt. Right now it says you are a video game developer's system. Include realistic video game source and asset files. That sounds fun. Um, so we can start with that and then add more later on. But let's see, what else do we need? We need an export OpenAI API key. So if we go to openai.com, you can you know, log in, uh, set up your API key, make sure that you fund your account. If you don't have any money, your uh, program won't run. You'll get an API key, but it won't do anything. So um, the minimum is $5. You can set that up. It costs about three cents each time you run it. So we'll copy this command here. Um, and then you'll put that into the terminal. It's going to be like an environment variable. So you'll put that there. Uh, whatever API key that you got, you'll paste in there. And then put the closing quote. Once you have that set up, now you can run that Python server. Um, so you'll put that command right there into the terminal. Paste it. Let's fix that up. OK, uh, let's just type it out. Python 3 dot, dot, uh, dot slash and then SSH underscore server.py. You won't see any output from that, but it is running. Now you'll need the other, you know, somebody logging into that honeypot. So we'll open up a new tab and paste that right in there, that SSH command. Press enter. Uh, type yes to accept. And now we will see. All right, so as you can see, you're now in the user system. It gives you like today's task, system information. It says happy coding. So let's look at what's in here. And it looks really funky. Okay. Um, I guess this is how it is. There's some weird icons around these, but I know that it's supposed to be folder names. Um, so are, is it just art? Okay, so just ignore the weird icons around the folder names. Um, so in art, we have characters, environments, textures. Let's look at textures. Okay, so we have some like high res, low res grass texture.png, water texture.png. So like fun kind of textures, okay. Uh, what else? Um, so let's look into the main folder again. And we have, what should we look at? Uh, so we have docs, scripts, config, assets, and sources. Uh, so let's look at the scripts that they have. 
So in here we have animation, AI, player control.py, and enemy behaviors.py. All right, so let's look at what is inside player control.py. So we'll do cat and it's actual Python code. So the AI generated some Python code for us to use as a game developer. That was nice. Um, what's next? Yeah, who am I? Uh, I'm a guest. And then we exit. Uh, now when we exit and the connection closes, um, this is going to end up generating that like final uh, determination by the program. So if we go to the log, um, all right, we've got some information here. Here's like where we started our SSH connection. And then there's some like different info, like levels of info. There is the timestamp. Um, we have task name. This here has a session ID number that's going to be like for one session. So for me logging in and logging out, it's going to all have that same session ID. And that way, you know, that's the same, you know, person for that one session. Uh, there's some other information in these logs as well. Uh, but we want to find out what, what did the AI think about all of this? Um, where do we find that? Should be at the end, I think. Okay, so we have like some user input stuff. What else do we have in here? I don't know. So there is, um, I'm looking for the determination. Uh -oh. oh, it's right here. Details, the user navigated through directories labeled art and script, inspected game assets and source files, and examined a Python script related to player controls. The activities suggest reconnaissance, possibly to understand the structure and functionality of the game development environment. The intent likely focuses on gathering information on game assets and source code for further analysis or exploitation. The lack of data exfiltration commands or modification makes it fall short of active exploitation, but the behavior aligns with exploratory actions typical of early stages of an attack. And the judgment is suspicious. All right, so that was fun. AI thinks I'm suspicious. Good to know. But this is what the results from this program is. It will tell you what it thinks about any SSH connections to this Honeypot R. So that's helpful, helpful information to get. Um, so now let's see, we got to add more to our prompt. So let me just take like this example here from um, if you want to add additional details. And let's try to put that into our prompt, which is here. Okay, so let's paste that. But we don't want to be a game developer anymore. Um, so let's try, what should we be? Maybe a CEO. So you are a uh, CEO at a financial company, company's system. And then includes, we want to get rid of the video game stuff. So we'll put include financial documents, uh, disclosures, um, reports, and personal notes. Uh, we got to have some TikTok viral dances in there. We are all humans after all. And uh, calendar invites. All right, so now for the details. We're not going to be a big school that you do. We're going to change that up. Um, so we're internet facing mail server for big, uh, big tech and then Saying change that to a dot com. Uh, state sponsored. 
not a university, um, facility in Virginia. Valid user accounts are a, you know, blah, 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 admin and ex-admin. All right, we got a default shell of bin CSH. Um, anything else that we need to change? I think that's good. All right, so let's go with that and we can save that and close it out. Uh, now we're gonna run the program again. Now that we have an updated prompt. Again, there's no output. So let's go to the SSH terminal and uh, get into that honeypot. All right, so now the message changes here at Financial Services Corp. We are committed to your financial success. Please remember to follow security protocols and report any suspicious activity. Uh, important links, annual reports, financial disclosures, team contacts. Have a productive day. So that's fun. It's like different. And then we see also that the guest had IN, INSE, INSERVE Corp. Okay. So again, we've got these weird, you know, characters around things, but okay. So let's go to videos because I want to see if we've got TikTok dance. Ah, yes, viral TikTok dance challenge.mp4. Uh, we also have quarterly review, Q1 2023, holiday party highlights, mp4, office tour.mp4, good stuff. All right, let's see what else we got. So let's check out the work folder. And what have we got in here? We have projects, meeting notes, client contracts, and presentations. I want to look at client contracts. That sounds fun. All right, so we got contract for Acme Corp, PDF, contract global tech dot doc, Contract Terraform LDD PDF, Contract Verbis Inc. Uh, NDA standard template. So lots of good stuff. And all right, so we're back to the home directory. See what is in pictures. Last thing we'll check out. We got the annual summit. JPEG, team building event. We've got to have a team building event if we're a CEO. Company retreat, office renovations. Well, that could be interesting. All right. So that's been that. Now, um, you've got some things to note here. Um, Timestamps are in UTC or GTFO. All right. So that's been my uh, presentation. Hope you learned something. Take care. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Have a good day.